subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. Dogs are highly intelligent from an evolutionary standpoint and because of their relationship with humans dogs are actually considered to be exceptionally cognitively gifted they are probably the smartest animal on the planet when it comes to relationships with humans and understanding us and then getting also a very rewarding relationship back as well humans and dogs have co-evolved together and have shaped each other's evolution and societies and lives for millennia dogs and humans have evolved to live together in each other's societies and in the vicinity of each other so it is no surprise that they are smart and know humans a fair bit but how smart dogs are is not something that has been quantifiable just yet Understanding dog cognition and dog intelligence gives us clues to understanding cognition in other non-human species as well such as apes and dolphins as well as in human babies and thus helping us understand the mechanism of how we learn. We of course know that dogs can learn commands and understand them. This is because they are trained to do so and during training they associate a word with an action. So there's a command and there's an action and in return there's typically a reward. But this is conditioning and that is how dogs are trained. But then there are some dogs that remember words and names in the context of play sessions without actually undergoing training sessions. These dogs typically remember names of toys and this is particularly seen in Border Collies who are widely considered to be the smartest dog breed in the world. Different dog breeds have been created by humans for different purposes. There's of course ethical questions around rescuing and adoption but in this video we're not touching upon that. We are talking about dog breeds and their intelligence. Dog breeds are classified into different categories depending on the kind of work that they've been bred to do. For example, working dogs like huskies are bred for pulling sleds, so they have also evolved to modulate their metabolism in extreme cold. Hounds are used to help with hunting large, live, warm-blooded animals and searching for them, so their noses are very powerful and they can run ridiculously fast. Then there's sporting dogs like retrievers who, as the name suggests, were bred to retrieve sport or shot birds. And then there's the herding group. These are the group of sheep dogs that are bred for keeping livestock and cattle in check as these animals graze across large open fields and areas away from humans. These dogs are typically seen running around and herding the animals and if they're in your family home, they do have a tendency to also herd little children. Sheep dogs are considered to be exceptionally intelligent because they have to judge a sheep or a cow's actions when physically far away from humans who are not able to look and the dogs then have to make independent decisions for the safety of the herd. So, these dogs are considered to be extremely intelligent, they are very eager to please, they always want to work and they want something to do and thus they are highly trainable. They are also used for police work, detective work, for herding work and much more. Of these herding dogs, collies are particularly intelligent and border collies even more so. Border Collies are considered to be the most intelligent dog breed and there's now new research that goes into how they acquire long-term memory of object names that other breeds don't necessarily have been able to do at all. In dog cognition research, dogs that have a database of names, object names stored in their heads are called gifted word learners. These dogs are rare and they're very very special. Their skills seem to be functionally similar to how human infants work. So, is this how our co-evolutions shaped us for highly intelligent dogs to take a shortcut to learn things in a manner similar to human babies? And do their methods of learning provide us clues into how babies learn new words and retain them? 
To understand how these cognitive skills work, how quickly dogs acquire new names and register them, and how long they form long-term memories for, researchers from Hungary studied six gifted word learner dogs. These dogs were tested on their ability to learn the name of six new toys first and then 12 new toys, all during social interactions with owners. Then a month later and then two months later, the dog's memory of these names were tested in various combinations. In this experiment, each dog owner got six new dog toys first and they had a week to teach their dog the names of these toys. The names were chosen at random actually from social media. The names were taught as a part of play sessions and not training sessions. So there was no conditioning and reward. There was just social interaction in the form of play. So owners picked up new toys, repeated the name of the toys, gave the toy to their dog to play around with and then made their dog retrieve the toy from a pile of other toys. There were six border collies in the experiment and of these, four learned all the six new names with just half an hour of play each day. A fifth dog took an hour and a half hours of play each day while a sixth took two and a half hours. The ability to recall these names was tested after a week at the end of day seven. This was experiment one. And then in experiment two, which was conducted about three weeks later, the owners had to teach the names of 12 new toys to the same dogs. The dogs once again spent pretty much the same amount of time they had played earlier to learn the names of 12 new toys as well. The dogs were tested again on day seven by asking to go get the toy from among a pile of all other kinds of toys. And then they were also allowed to play with it for a week or two before all the toys were taken away. Experiment three occurred a month later and was for recall. The dogs were asked to retrieve toys which were picked from the 12 new names that they had learnt. From the 12 toys, only six were used in the experiment and the dogs were supposed to go pick them out correctly. Then, a month later, experiment four was conducted where the rest of the six toys were used so the dogs had to exercise their recall two months after they learned their names. The results show that overall, at least three dogs were able to retrieve all the dog toys correctly, while some missed here and there. But more importantly, the results showed that dogs are able to maintain some form of long-term memory for names for at least two months. These findings show that intelligent dogs are able to learn words at the rate of 12 new ones a week, which is comparable to how quickly infants start learning when they are at their vocabulary spurt age. The vocabulary spurt age is the age where babies and infants move from learning one to two new words a week to up to nine new words a day. This typically happens between the ages of 13 months and 18 months. We don't fully understand the mechanism behind how this happens in the brain, but we know that this is the stage where infants stop associating the sound of a word to a specific object and are actually able to understand that the word represents the object among many other objects in their environment. This is functional word learning and it is extremely important to retain memory of these objects and their names after first exposure. In human studies, we've known that 18-month-old babies can remember names for 24 hours, roughly. Two and a half year old babies can remember names for a week. And when kids hit the age of three to four years, they can learn a new word or name and remember it for up to a month. We've also seen some results of these kind in chimps and parrots and dolphins, but not to this extent. However, with dogs, understanding how their brain works can help us understand ours because of how dogs live with us. Other animals like dolphins and parrots and chimps don't live in the human environment naturally, but a dog's natural environment is the human natural environment and family dogs are in fact raised like babies where they are cared for in a household. 
when humans talk to dogs we also speak in a way where our grammar our acoustics and our tone and even the broken sentences we use or single words that we use are all similar to how adult humans talk with babies and infant humans additionally dogs also have other skills for communication with humans they can sense changes in our tone they can sense our body language they can even understand our emotions at times they even look at us the way we look at each other when animals look at each other they size each other up by examining their overall face structure and body shape but when humans look at each other when we meet each other we typically look into a person's right eye and then the left eye mostly even when we have conversations we are actually looking at another person's right eye continuously dogs when they look at other dogs look at them like they're looking at other animals looking at their entire face structure but when dogs look at human faces as has been demonstrated in experiments they first look at our right eye and then they look at our left eye dogs look at us very much like we look at each other and we behave with them also like we behave with each other so dogs learning in this environment is a good window into understanding how human cognition develops and works as well for example the researchers state that when children learn the word say sock or socks they understand that it is not a proper noun used for one object instead it refers to a category of objects which are socks some dogs have been able to show the ability to associate a word with a replica of an object that they learnt it with which is kind of mind blowing studying dog cognition and research this way helps us understand numerous things such as how their intelligence evolved to work with us how our own intelligence evolves as we grow up and how the intelligence of other non human animals works